Hi and welcome back. In the last video we had, we took an original photo here. Let me show you that one. So this is the original photo. And what we wanted to do was preserve the model here and put her in a different background. We like the picture of the, the woman, but we want a better background for that. So basically what I did was I uh, drew a pathway. I, I copied this original photo layer for up here and drew a path around her. So if you go to the paths tab here, you can click on it and you can see there it is. That's the path that I, I drew. So if I turn off this one behind it, and there's a, a layer here with a black background underneath it. But that's the path I drew. And then I inverted it and deleted everything around her. And then with a, a, a paintbrush, you'll see there that I filled in some of those areas with black. So it would blend in with my background, just like that. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this edited picture that I made with the black background behind it. So it's all one black background. And we're going to export this out as a JPEG right now. So I'm going to go up to File, Export, Quick Export as JPEG. And I'm just going to save this JPEG onto my uh, desktop. And I'm going to call it Image for Mask. Image for Mask. I'm going to save that onto the desktop. Click save, and now I can close this. I don't need this anymore um, now that I've created my uh, my path and my uh, and deleted the background behind her for the most part. So yeah, I'll go ahead and save it. All right, so here's my image for mask right here. Now again, to keep the dimensions the same size, the way I opened the original photo is I just opened it with Photoshop. So I'm going to do the same thing with my JPEG because it's going to be the same dimensions. So you right click on your mouse and then you just choose open with. And we're going to choose Photoshop again. Okay, and again, wait 20 minutes. Got to keep the joke running, right? All, right? All right. So we're almost there. Once this pops up, then what we're going to do is we're going to create our mask. Okay. So just for the sake of uh, having a backup when I need it, I like to make a. I'm going to just double click on the background and unlock it. I'm going to make a duplicate of the background. Oops. Just grab the layer and drag it to the plus sign on your layers window. And that'll make a duplicate. There it is. I can shut this one off. Um, just one that's untouched that I don't want to mess with. And on this copy now, what I'm going to do is call this, uh, we'll just call it mask. Okay, and now, so to create the mask, um, basically what I'm going to need to do is paint her in basically all white. Okay, so the logic is this. When you create a mask, a layer mask, Anything that's white is going to show up. Anything that's black is going to be um, filtered out. Okay, so that's how it works. It's just basically two systems here of color. All right, so first thing we're going to do is grab our hue saturation. So we're going to go up to image, adjustments, hue saturation. We're going to pull out the color of this image, okay, on this layer. And you could adjust the lightness a little bit, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it too much. Bring out. I'm going to try to bring out the lights here a little more. Well, that's fine, I guess. So we'll do that. The other thing you can do is, uh, sometimes it works, is uh, brightness contrast. So image, adjustment, brightness contrast. You can either increase or decrease the contrast. Adjust the brightness or the darkness. Sometimes that helps bring out the, the whites. But you don't want to ruin all your detail as well. You want to keep some of the uh, shadows in there too, so to speak. So maybe right there, that looks pretty good. Click OK. 
And now what we're going to do is paint white in the area that we want to preserve, right? So we're going to use the, the paintbrush. Uh, oops, wrong one, sorry. Where the pencil is, right? Grab our brush tool. Make sure white is your foreground color, which it is here. And we can just start filling this in. I'm going to bring up the size here with the bracket tool. And the idea here is to create the area that we're going to preserve using white. Okay. And I go right to the edges. I don't want to get the strands of hair on the outside because those are already white but I want to go right to the edge if I can. Okay, and you just paint this all in. And we'll keep that darkened area there. I can get rid of it later. Okay, and now we're going to zoom in. And we're going to use a smaller brush size and get those little fringe areas there. So again, go back to my brush here, Bra left bracket tool, we'll bring it down and just kind of get in there in the areas that are kind of in between. We want to preserve those too. Okay. Let's go down a little bit more for right here. We'll get that. I think everything else will be uh, okay. So the idea is to get all the mostly solid areas of uh, varying value, but are for the most part pretty solid. Everything else I think I can preserve with brightness contrast in the end. Or close, darn near close enough, I guess. All right, so just keep working your way around. Just take, again, it's one of those things you want to take your time to get the edges. So far, so good. Right here, maybe a little bit more. Okay. All right, we'll keep going here. And uh, this is a little bit tedious, but it, it shouldn't take you too long once you get going. And again, the outside strands I'm going to leave because I want the black areas to disappear as much as possible so it's less work I have to do later after I apply the mask and we are you know humans that we are we like to follow follow the path of least resistance sometimes here all right enough of my rant okay let's keep going here bump this up a little bit if you want kind of makes things go a little faster there in the end just be careful, you know, on the edges that you're getting it as uh, accurately as possible. And since the top of her head got cut off, we lucked out there. We don't have to go much further than that on that side. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to move over to this side here. And we're going to finish this. It's looking pretty good. And again, you notice here I'm just getting kind of the more of the solid areas and leaving the strands alone because I think with brightness and contrast I can bring those out as well. So I'm not going to worry too much about the outside strands. Okay, and we'll grab this. Bring that to the edge there. And down here, and then we got to go over this way and finish up over here. All right, so we're moving right along here. Let's grab this. Just the sweater area, maybe. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's zoom out and take a look at it. So alt here and then so that's what basically what your image should look like. It should just be a white 
an, or an area filled in with white and the background should be completely black. Okay. Now, the last thing I might do before I try to apply this is uh, a brightness contrast. So I'm going to go over to image adjustments, brightness contrast one more time and try to adjust these level. Notice here that I can bring up the brightness a little bit, bring the strands of hair out or keep them low. I'm just going to bring it up slightly and see how that affects everything. Maybe there, that looks good. Click OK. And now we've got our uh, mask image. So essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to create a clipping mask or a layer mask here. And uh, then we're just going to move it to the layer that we want to apply it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is bring in a picture that I want to put in the background now. Now is a good time to do that. So let's go ahead and go File, uh, or better yet, let's just grab one. Yeah. So let's go into my folder and grab my background photo that I want to use. You should already have this figured out. If not, you know, go grab a royalty copyright free photo. You can use a program such as pixabay.com. Uh, free photos are available there. Sometimes all they ask is that you give a shout out to the person that snapped the picture. Okay, so let's go to, the, I found one on Pixabay here, and it's basically Yellowstone, and it's a pretty image. So I'm going to bring this one in, drop that in. Notice how small it is. I'm going to have to blow that thing up. Hopefully I won't uh, lose a lot of the resolution or most of the resolution. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. That should work fine for our purposes. Something like that. Hit enter. Now we've got Yellowstone in there. Again, if I want, don't want this to be a uh, smart object, I can just click on here. Basically rasterize the layer. Get rid of the smart object there. So now let's bring the mask up top here. There we go. Now... The reason why I do that is because I want you to see what I'm going to do here with this mask layer. We're going to create the mask right now. Basically, now we have our uh, mask image that we're going to use. We have our image that we brought in, you know, the image for mask. That was basically this picture here that we brought in, the JPEG that we saved out. And then we have Yellowstone here underneath. So we're going to try to put her in Yellowstone and make it look as convincing as possible, like it was actually taken there, okay? That's the challenge anyway. So on this mask layer, we need to create a layer mask of this, okay? And you can, if I click here, down here, like if you go down to the bottom of the layers window, right next to the effects, FX, there's what's called add layer mask. If I click that, look at that, all we get is a full image of white. That's not what we want, okay? So control Z. To do it right, to create a layer mask from this layer, we need to select all the area we want to keep, okay? So the white area is basically what we want to preserve. So we're going to grab this uh, magic wand tool on our toolbar. We're going to make sure that uh, contiguous is not selected. That's good. Just click somewhere in there. You know, check to see it's getting everything. It's not getting everything. So let's bring up the tolerance here to about 50% maybe. Again, click again. And now it looks like we're getting almost everything, but we didn't get this one again and some of these. So let's bring up our tolerance to, uh, oh, let's go 100%. What the heck? We're going to click here and click again. And 100% looks like it's doing the job. Notice it's getting all the strands. That's what we want to do. So now that we have all of our areas selected that we want to preserve, now we can click this um, add layer mask button, you know, on the bottom of our layers window, click that and notice there a mask was created. Okay. So it's this, this part of the layer plus the mask we just created. Okay. So now the easiest way to do this, to apply this is to grab this mask that you created and drop it into the layer where you want to apply it. Okay, now we put this mask that we created down here. Okay, turn off the eyeball and notice there, now it's being applied. Okay, 
If I turn this off or I get rid of it, watch what happens. Now we've got the same old background, but when we apply the layer mask to this layer, just by dragging it in, now it's being applied to her, right? So that's kind of the basic uh, process, how you do it. You, uh, you know, get your image that you want to preserve with a black background, save it out as a JPEG, then reopen that JPEG in Photoshop and uh, desaturate the uh, area that you want to keep. Then what you do is you paint it over in white. Then you select that white area. Then you click add layer mask or this add layer mask button, or you can do it up here under layer where it says layer. You can also add a layer mask. Um, let's see where will we find that. Where it says layer mask there. So you can actually create a layer mask from that window too, but it's easier down here, I think. And uh, then what you do once you create that mask on the mask on the layer that you painted, then you just grab it and drag it down to the layer where you want to apply it, and you're good to go. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to clean up some of these edges in here. Notice there I still have some black uh, paint from the previous image that I need to clean up, and I'll show you how to do that.